this is the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. There is a woman I recently worked with who was at her wit's end with her quest to find love. Now, she had been working on herself for years. She did a ton of therapy, and before she hired me, she was actually in a program for single women who were looking for long-term relationships. But here's the thing. She had absolutely zero dating experience, and she was 45 years old. Well, you know, the backstory is that she grew up in a conservative household with very traditional and religious family values, and she was always the good gal growing up. She was getting good grades, doing the right thing, never making waves, not really saying what she wanted, but rather saying what she thought others wanted to hear to make them happy. So life had passed her by and with her busy pleasing others and she couldn't even imagine doing anything that was seen as quote unquote bad or outside of what she was supposed to do as the good girl. So fast forward to the point of when she hired me, she realized life had passed her by and there was not this unknowing of how to date and admittingly she was embarrassed that she hadn't even had sex. So I started with her as I start with all of my clients, and I asked her to write a mission statement of what she would like to accomplish in the next three months working together. And her list, of course, started out with what she thought the right thing to say was. And she said, oh, you know, I want a relationship with a loving partner. I want to get married and build a life together, yada, yada, yada. And I said, that's nice. And I will help you get there. But let's get real. What is it that you really want right now? And there was a long pause at the end of the line, and she responded in a really soft voice, I'm not sure. And then we started talking about feeling badly that things weren't progressing like the other women in this relationship oriented program. But here's the thing the other women had a ton of dating experiences, and yes, they had sexual experiences. So I said to her again, come clean. What is it that you really want right now? And she said in a gasp, I'm scared to say it. And I said, just say it, say it loud, say it proud. And then she screamed out at the top of her lungs, I want sex. (laughs) And then she, I almost like heard her quickly cover her mouth and she exclaimed, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I said that. I, I told her never, ever apologize for speaking your truth, for saying what you really need and what you really want. And I was so proud of her for being in her authentic self. So guess what? We built a plan around her having sex and she did and she loved it. And it wasn't that we were kind of making her into this promiscuous woman, but for her, it was such an important journey, increasing her confidence and being empowered. And so by the end of our coaching, she was so happy and she was happy with who she was. And then she started dating up a storm and got more serious. And she was really ready for the next step to find love. So how many times do you cover your ears or put on a fake smile in fear of being yourself? How much energy do you expend worrying about being normal, proper, polite in order to be accepted? The truth is, is when you hide your authentic and vulnerable side, you actually attract lopsided relationships, and you've heard me talk about this before, and also inside, you're creating intense feelings of resentment and exhaustion. I mean, it is exhausting trying to be something that you are not. And so it is time to strip the armor and get naked or get friggin' real, as my guest likes to call it. Well, she'll say it probably in a more real way, I'm sure. So in 2014, after 15 years of business, this woman got friggin' real and dismantled her successful seven-figure business. She was proud of the financial accomplishment, but she was burdened by the monster she created, and it did not make her happy. So... Oh, also to make things worse, her six-figure on 
your terms events were helping hundreds of entrepreneurs and her refreshing juicy marketing training was in high demand around the world. But she learned that just because something is successful and people like it doesn't mean you have to keep doing it. So she always knew she had a low tolerance for not being happy. After all, she left a successful corporate career with companies like AT&T and Lipton at age 28. But now she knows her mission and is here to help other mission-based business owners get friggin' real so they can get out of their own way and help more people. She is the host of the groundbreaking Get Friggin' Real podcast and founder of the GFR Squad, a lively community that gives people permission to get real in order to better fulfill their mission. Welcome, Lisa Cherney. You are so friggin' awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't even done anything yet, but I'll take the compliment. <laughs> oh, well, I just reading your bio and your story and I like I, I love it and so resonated with it. And I'm I'm dropping my F bombs, but I you're you know, you can get real here. And okay. Do that I can say the real. F-bomb. The real. <laughs> yes, you totally can. <laughs> well, let's get to it then. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, I want to hear more about your story. I mean, I set it up just because that was your bio, but like, what was your journey in getting here? You know, just in more detail. I started, so you read that I'd left corporate when I was 28. And, yeah. you know, when you leave, a job and that sort of definition of yourself, that identity, you have this opportunity to really find yourself. And what I realized when I left the job and I started my own business was that the passion that I had was for helping other people to be authentic, Mm -hmm. not just in their life, but also in their marketing. And, you know, honestly, Kim, I would meet these great people and I would, it's, it was like a, like a funny little skit where they would hand me their business card and I'd look down at their card and what it said and their expert title and all these things. And I look back at them and look down at their car. I look back at them and it was like two different, <laughs> two different people. And I, it was like an aha that I had when I realized I have to help people find their words and like be authentic in their marketing so they can attract like the people that they want. And, and so that's when conscious marketing was born. That was my very first business 20 years ago, Mm consciousmarketing.com. And I'll tell you from the very beginning, people were asking me to apply it to dating from the very, very beginning. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. (laughs) Oh, that's so great. Oh yeah. Well, one of the main ways that we would go about it would be to help them to claim their ideal client. And it was a pretty in-depth, you know, module of my program, my work with people, because they had to really get clear about what they wanted and who they wanted to work with and, you know, who they wanted to attract. And so it is not very far from dating, right? And in fact, I used to often use the analogies of how when you, when you are not authentic in your marketing, it's like being not authentic in dating. And then, you know, three months down the line, you're going on a hiking trip to Nepal when you just want to be in a spa because you, you haven't been able to be real with your partner. A hundred percent. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. That's like my origin story of Mm -hmm. sort of where the whole idea of, of being authentic, um, began and, you know, flash forward to, uh, you know, just about a year ago, I transitioned from really um, putting out there that my, like about my expertise being really about marketing and I GFR'd and Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? This is not about marketing, y'all. This is about you getting out of your own freaking way and getting real about who you are, how you want to help people and, and making sure you're clear about what's slowing you down because life is short. And so now that is really where I love to dwell is in the, is in the GFR arena, even, you know, before, before people get clear about their marketing or even a lot of people, um, just like in relationships, you know, they they want, they decide they want something new. They want to change. They want to shift. They want to stop doing this and start doing that. And it all has to do with how real they're willing to get about what they want. Just like the story that you kicked us off with, like how, You know, we need to really get real in order to get on the right path and shed the things that are standing in the way of what we want. Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, I wondered, was, has this always been like easy for you? Were you always just this like kind of 
vulnerable, authentic person, or was there a time that it was harder for you? And did you, you know, like, did you learn along the way? That's a really great question because it's so easy to listen to people like you and I and think right. we sort of popped out this way, right? Exactly. And then, right. And then listeners sort of create a story, well, that works for them or that's mm-hmm. okay for them or, you know, and and not me. And and the truth is that I've probably been nearly everywhere <laughs> that any <laughs> listener is in any stage of the game. And no, it wasn't always easy for me. You know, I when I was um, in my early 20s and in college, I got real about having an eating disorder and mm-hmm. how I was using um, addiction, in my case, it was around food, to, to really um, cover up all of my discomfort and my stress and discomfort in relationships and stress around college and insecurities about my body and my weight. And of course, that just was like a vicious cycle and security about your body and your weight. And then you totally, that's not a good thing. Right. And so, um, so that was, I think, you know, going and I, and the first thing I did was I, um, I invested time and energy into a 12 step program, which I have a billion beautiful things to say about the world of 12 steps and, um, and the healing that occurs. And I think that was really Kim for me when I got raw and real and vulnerable and entered a space where I was like, you know, I do like, things that are not healthy with food. And it's, you know, like, and, and that's where I had my spiritual awakening. That's really where mm-hmm. I, I learned the value. It's in, even in the steps about, you know, just being truthful and, and, and realizing where your resentments are. And, and for a long time, Kim, especially in dating, I could tell you a funny story about when I first met my husband, I was, um, yeah, I was just going to ask you yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because I was one year into um, sort of my getting real about my addiction and my journey and, you know, how I just didn't have the tools to deal with like life and emotions and all that kind of stuff. And um, so it was a big secret that I had that I was in this 12-step program and I have this Mm. problem and I was going to these meetings and, you know, and, you know, when you, when you first get real about overcoming something like that, it's really helpful when it's a priority in your life, you know, above all else, you know, when you really make yourself the top priority. So I had to say to this new guy I was dating, like, listen, like this is, I come first, you know, this is my top priority and everything else needs to be figured out along the way. And when I finally was able to share it with him, of course, that just brought us closer. Mm -hmm. Um, And Really, and I got to see who he was and all his, you know, where he, how he was able to really honor where that was in my life. And so, um, we, we're married almost 25 years next Aww. year. <laughs> Congrats. That's awesome. No, you know what? I, um, I, sorry to interrupt, but it just, I, it's on the tip of my tongue right now as you're talking, it's funny. Cause it, this is like really a meta conversation in that the minute you started sharing your own story just now, like I, there was this pull to you more, like, it's like, Oh, there's, there's the real Lisa, you know, like, cause then I think everybody listening can feel that. Cause all the stuff that you talked about struggling with, I mean, we talk about here on the show that we, we all struggled, especially with body image and, and, and whatnot. So I, I love that you shared that and seeing where you are today, giving people hope that you can overcome these things by being in your authentic self, by being vulnerable. That's what brings us all together. That's what attracted your guy. So they, I, I love that you shared that. Yeah, it was a really significant thing. And uh, having things that we feel are secrets, things mm-hmm. that we're embarrassed about, things that we hide are so monumentally huge and in our way. I believe when it yeah. comes to our full expression of ourselves in our life, in our, in our work, in our relationships, you know, and a lot of my audience are entrepreneurs. So they're mission d- driven folks that are like wanting to help people in a certain way. And if they feel like they're, you know, they're holding back, it, it just, it holds back their business. So, um, no, it, it hasn't always come naturally to me. And I, that was probably the, my first big secret that I started sharing and really um, letting people know. And, you know, I have, I have a whole, the first episode of my um, Get Fucking Real podcast is called Who the Fuck is Lisa Cherney? <laughs> <laughs> I heard it actually. It's awesome. And so I just yeah. lay it all out there. So if y'all uh, want to go like be, feel normal. <laughs> yes. Totally. Hear my crazy 
<laughs> an episode one of my show. And, and then every episode of my show is about somebody's harrowing, embarrassing, crazy journey. And so it's very inspiring and very relatable, even though you maybe haven't been in jail or woke up paralyzed. Um, <laughs> You know, it's there's always there's parts of our journey that are just there's they're just human experience and so that was really my intention when I launched the show and 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 you know and of course I walk my talk and I feel like mm-hmm. you know for my clients that's a, a big thing that they're working on is walking well, their talk yeah 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 no totally I mean I always say that adversity or our own stories are gifts in disguise. We just don't see it at the time. And it's not until we're through it and we look back and we say, ah, there's the gift. You yes. know, and that's what we can like pass on to others. That's what inspires us. That's what brings us all together. So you're so right. I wondered, you know, in your journey, what at what point did you decide to go to the 12 step program? Because, you know, there's a lot of people who have a hard time, like they know intellectually that they need to change or do something or get friggin' real, but they don't know like what can motivate them or how to even get there. Like, did you hit rock bottom? Like what happened? Let me, let me go back into my memory banks. So I was a freshman, freshman or sophomore in college and People gain, they make a joke that you gain the freshman 15. Well, I gained the freshman mm-hmm. 50. And I think that it was a crucible. And I think we all mm-hmm. have those crucibles where there's just a lot of things that come together to create a rock bottom as a way to as a way to call it, but there's like a pressure cooker where the it just needs to uncork in some way. Mm-hmm. So you know, with a lot of addictions and, and struggles that people have, they could be way more destructive, like alcoholism or gambling. And the, the, the repercussions are, you know, probably far more harrowing than gaining 50 pounds because it's such a personal journey. But that, but I was so freaking miserable <laughs> that, you know, I just was so freaking miserable and tired of being miserable. Um, and, the 12 step program is super accessible, especially like I just went onto their website just the other day for a friend. Mm-hmm. I think there was no, there wasn't anything on the web. Like there, you know, it's so accessible, right? They have even virtual meetings now for all these programs. Like there was, you know, you had to like go find a room in a church, you know, somewhere yeah. where people were meeting, you know, I remember doing that. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's, you know, just like when I work with people, um, when I mentor them in their business, I, it's often like, how ready are you? Or are you ready yeah. for that change? And, and, you know, people know, like, I hope when they're hearing this, this, this show that they're like, you know what? Okay, no, it's time for me to really get out of my own way. It's time for me to GFR. And, you know, what, what is the impetus? So it's a, mm-hmm. it's a great question. I think everybody has their different bottom, but my bottom now is, is being present every day to how freaking short life is. Just like look around, you know that person who just got the diagnosis. You know that person that, you know, just like lost their kid or just crazy shit that happens. And when I look at it, yeah, it's sad, but it helps me to remind myself that I want to take actions as if life is short. So that's I, I hope people can get to that space and just be like, okay, like it's at the end of the year, right? When this episode is airing, do you want to make the same freaking New Year's resolution that you've made every freaking year? <laughs> yes. <laughs> or want, right? Or do you just want this time to be the time that you've made progress? So whatever your impetus is. Yes. I love that. Well, you know, there's so many different things that can motivate you, but I think it usually does take where you feel kind of just that fed up. And I, you know, usually when I do breakthrough calls, I always have people rate themselves, like, how fed up are you? You know, know, like, and if, if you're, you're feeling at an eight to 10, that's actually good. You know, I always say that, let that drive you and move you to change because, you know, when you're in that kind of feeling and that thing is going on in your stomach, use that to, to thrust forward, not just stay there because that bubbling up, that percolation that happens is, is then, and that's where it can really explode and, and do bad things. So use it to, to good. And along those lines, I was 
I love, love your friggin' <laughs> GFR commandments because you have this, you, you, I don't know, I've been reading it and it's just brilliant because I think it lays out a really um, clear way and how people can get out of their way, get real, that kind of thing. Do you want to mention some of that? Would love to. And you kicked us off beautiful with your story about mm-hmm. that gal, um, you know, you know, and she was, you told her never apologize for speaking your truth. And so, so let's just, just a little bit about the, the 12 GFR commandments. So I've been coaching and mentoring six and seven figure entrepreneurs for 20 years. And I, and I, I do that over a long period of time. So I get to see a lot. And most recently when I was ready for an up level in my mission and GFR was born, I was really looking at how I was helping people over these last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And it, it like struck me almost in like a flash, these 12 things. And it's so funny. It's like ironic. We're talking about the 12 steps. And, (laughs) and, uh, so I, I, I realized there's 12 ways that mission driven folks, or even life inspired folks, people that are, you know, driven by being authentic, how they get in their way, how we, Mm -hmm. how we get in our way. And they became the 12 GFR commandments. And then each commandment has what I'm, you know, I enjoy calling a confession question. And so the idea, unlike the 12 steps, is there is no order for these. And that you look at them, you look at all the confession questions, and you see, I say, which one hits you in the gut, Mm -hmm. and then just get writing. And so, for example, to be on theme for our discussion today, GFR commandment number three says, don't worry about being normal, proper, or polite. So that's what I, I found that so many people that I was holding space for and coaching and, you know, in programs for is that they were, they were so consumed with, you know, being perceived as normal, so consumed with not wanting to offend anybody, so consumed with mm-hmm. like trying to appeal to the masses that they watered down their marketing, they watered down their personality yeah. and they did not attract what they wanted. And they were wondering what was going on. And so the confession question for that one is, where am I not speaking my truth? Mm. Where am I not speaking my truth? And it's so revealing like to really genuinely ask ourselves that question. And you know, if you're a business owner, it, it applies directly to your marketing. Like where, I always say, I said, if, if you didn't worry about offending anybody, what would you be saying in your marketing? And I want everyone to write that down if that this, oh, that's good. Idea, right. Yeah. What would you say if you weren't worried about offending anyone? Because that soapbox that we get on, you know, and whether you have a business or not, we all have a soapbox. That's the, that's to me is a beautiful expression of your passion and, you know, where you want to invest your energy. And that's the thing that attracts people to you. So that's just one of the GFR commandments and one of the confession questions. And there's 12 of them. <laughs> Covering all. I love it. Yeah, no, that's good because that, well, and just piggybacking off of what you said, that is so helpful because I can't tell you so many times, and I throw myself under the bus too with this. It's like, we think we know what we want, but then when you're really getting real and not thinking about what others want from you, sometimes you don't even know. <laughs> you know, like when you strip all of that away, you're like, wait, just like in the example that I gave in the beginning, like she honestly, I think in the back of her mind knew, but it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't something that she would actually say to herself or out loud. And so I love that you give people permission to do that and provide a space and an exercise around that. That's really powerful. Thank you. And we play with it on my show with my guests because each guest picks a commandment that really resonates with them. And Ooh. it's really Do I get fun. to do that when I go on your show? Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Wait, I feel like I have a cheat sheet because I get to see it before. <laughs> I you do. There. And that, I send it all to all my guests and they get to okay. look at it and we pick one. And, and sometimes we say, okay, what was the one that you wish you had when you were going through your, we call it your GFR wormhole, which is that dark night or that struggle, you know, before the you know, before the breakthrough. And sometimes it's like, which one do you wish you had or which one resonates with you now? And so they do serve multiple purposes. So. (laughs) Oh, I love it. 
That's awesome. Okay. So what is another commandment do you think you want to share with people? I want to just give it a little teasers because obviously I want everybody to go and just download this thing. It's so great. I think one that would really be relevant to this audience is number two, which is let go of what doesn't feel good. Let go of what doesn't feel good. And that confession question, so you can see if this one might be the one for you, is what doesn't feel good? (laughs) <laughs> and I think about this in, you know, personal romantic relationships. I think about it in relationships with our clients. I think about it in relationships with a boss, you know, family relationships. When we're holding on to things that don't feel good or we're tolerating things that don't feel good, mm-hmm. it actually is blocking the new things from coming in, right? So if we think right. about it like that, like, like I'm, I'm not saying no to this thing that I've been doing for years, even though it's not resonating with me anymore. I'm not telling so-and-so to stop calling me and bitching at me all the time, even though it brings me down every time I answer the phone. Or I'm not saying no to this, the guy that, you know, took me on a date that, you know, wouldn't listen to anything. I wouldn't let me get a word in edgewise, like wherever it is that we're tolerating, it literally is taking up energetic and physical space in our lives. And it's amazing the miracles that happen when we get up our courage to to let go of something that doesn't feel good and how the universe just supports that vacuum and brings something so much better, but can't if we're tolerating something that doesn't feel good. That's brilliant. And it actually relates to um, a conversation I was having with a client just yesterday because she was kind of like putting all this pressure on herself to go out with, you know, these guys that just didn't feel good to her, but she just felt like an obligation. And also she kept progressing with these guys because they wanted to physically. And again, she just she didn't have the experience or the words to use to say no and to set boundaries, but really pull in and say, Hey, this doesn't feel good. Cause she was too worried about what they would think. So that again, that it it's all these things What are so good. It's like the permission button that you're hitting on people, you know, to, to do these things. So yeah, that's a good one. What, how about a third one? Oh, okay. I'm, I'm rubbing my hands together here. Yeah. <laughs> Picking from the hat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, here's a good one. Mm -hmm. This is number 11. It says, embrace that you are not the same person you were when you made those mistakes and they will not repeat. Oh, yeah. And that confession question is, what past mistakes are causing me self-doubt now? Hmm. And I, I, this one comes up so much in my work with the mission driven entrepreneur because, well, first of all, because it's so close, like their mission and their business is so personal. And so it's harder to get back up when they get knocked down or when they get feedback, it just, it just feels so raw. And so they will have what they perceive to be like a failure or they try something and it doesn't work. And then from then on, it's like, I don't do that anymore. Or, I'm never going to do that again. Or, you know, or I don't like speaking or I hate selling or, mm-hmm. you know, I'm whatever it is that they create a story around. And then um, when I suggest to them to take something that even seems to a- appear to go close to that thing that they swore that they would never do, I just gently suggest like, are you that same person? Like that Mm -hmm. same person that fucked that thing up? (laughs) Are you that same person? And they always say no, Kim, right? Most people like, I know. And they might not totally connect with, oh, I learned from it. And so now I'm not the same person, but they just, okay, there's years that have gone by or marriages that have gone by or other businesses or other business partners or other experiences. And they have some connection to, no, I'm not the same person. And then if I could sort of take that little opening that they give me, and really show them that they're not the same person, they go, okay, great. I'm going to, all right, I'm willing to try this again because no, I'm not that same person. And, and, and this happened, this is really great too. Um, when you're in partnership with somebody who, who saw you made that mistake Mm -hmm. and they won't let it go. And you get to say, I am not the same person that made that other investment that didn't pay off, or I'm not the same person who dated that person and, you know, whatever, like I am a different person. So it's helpful too, for holding space for people around you to let you evolve. 
Yeah. And then you get to see who serves you and who doesn't, who's good for you, who's toxic. You know, that's the other thing when you're not getting real is you're morphing into something that you think others want from you. And so they like you that way most. and, And that's why it's lopsided, these relationships. So when you get rid of all that. And then you just say no. And I'm, that was then this is now kind of thing. You get to see who stays and who gets to go. And that's a good thing, but sometimes it's hard, you know, I call it a shedding, you know, and, and doing like almost like a cost benefit analysis on relationships at that point, you know, who is there for you. So that, that commandment is really good for that. That's, and it's a beautiful metaphor for business and people mm-hmm. create a story that that shedding is more risky because there's money connected to it, right? So I'm oh, going to yeah. clients, right? I'm going to lose these relationships um, without really thinking about what's the cost of keeping those relationships. So um, I, I love that you, that we hold the space for people with that in you know in their romantic relationships and people that they're dating. And I love this lopsided because I see this with business owners all the time, mm. holding on to, you know, oh, I've had this client for 10 years and they're paying me like a third of what everybody else is paying me. And it's like, and I bet you feel a little resentment every single time that you have to yeah. service that client. And that's toxic. Isn't it amazing how closely related business and love is, you know, with all this stuff. Cause I have a lot of badass business people like yourself on, and, you know, sometimes people don't make that connection. I'm like, really, it's no different. Like what applies in business applies in love. And, and conversely, what benefits you in love will benefit you in business, you know, cause it really like what shows up in one area often leaks into others. And so that's why, you know, I love working with people like you, you know, because I think again, it's like almost an assembly line. You know, if you're working on your business and your love life, that's when everything flourishes and you attract abundance. Absolutely. I totally 100% agree. In fact, um, you know, you asked me about have I always been this open? And, you know, one of the things that I think that has led me to hold space for the GFR mission is my willingness even more, even more and more recently to be more authentic and real about all aspects of my life, including my relationship and my marriage. And so one of my episodes, I think it's number 11 is about our, um, my unconventional marriage and how that has impacted my business. So oh, wow. like, there's, you don't even have to guess at the relationship between my relationship, my marriage, my sexuality, you know, my relationship with my body, any of that. I feel like it's impacted in a huge way who I show up to be in business and how I hold space for others and um, important enough to even do a whole episode of my show on it because it, it's one and the same, it, especially if you're, if you're mission driven, there is, mm. I'm sorry people, but there is no separation between your life and your relationships <laughs> and your love um, and your business. <laughs> Friggin well said. <laughs> And that's a GFR moment. I know. I love that. Um, so Lisa, I'm like, I, I want to like, just keep going with this, but I, I, maybe I'll just have you back on. We can like get yes. more commandments or something. Um, do, do you have any last parting words that you want to leave us with? And then definitely let everyone know where we can find you. The parting words would be that the more that we GFR, the more impact we'll have, the more joy we'll have. And then if you're, if it's business related, the more money we'll make. I truly, truly believe that Mm. there is a direct relationship between our willingness to be real, to confess, to make changes based on those confessions and the abundance that comes to us. So I, if this is resonating with you all, please grab your copy of the GFR commandments. You can go to my website at gfr.life. That's the, that's the URL gfr.life and then forward slash 12 C grab your copy of the commandments and just read those confession questions first and just see which one sort of has you go. Hmm. (laughs) I say, you know, which one hits you in the gut and, and lean into it. And, and if you want to be in a community where people are GFRing, you know, all day long, we have our um, private uh, GFR squad uh, membership and you can um, find details about that at that GFR.life or listen to the show. And we'll, we'll let you know how to get involved with that. But I just wanted to have a place, Kim, where people who resonated with 
that, you know, where it really speaks to their soul and they just want to be in community where people are just letting their hair down, mm. they had a place to go. So it's super like easy investment, no, not, not a big deal, but it's just to create community, create conversation. And I believe the people that listen to our shows, Kim, are the ones that are going to heal this planet, the ones yeah. that are going to make the difference. And the quicker that they can get out of their own way and get to it, the better. Mm, I love that. And I love what you're doing. And I'm so glad I met you at the New Media Summit. That's where we originally met. And yeah, it's just been a pleasure. So again, thanks for joining me today. And this has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know more, make sure you go to my site, seltzerstyle.com. And if you're ready to strip that armor and get real, sign up for a free breakthrough call by following the link in the show description, but after you download the GFR commandments, because I think that's going to help you even on the call. And I will help you map out a plan to find your authentic and vulnerable self in love. And from there, you'll be on the path to find that love and stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day.